gift giving and everybody's happy when they sing uh, some uh, you know uh, classic uh, just simple Christmas songs uh, it's like a head when you're fighting you know or you're in the street <laughs> can I get through this can I get through this so I always look forward to uh, Advent preparing for the coming of Christ um, my name is Kip Travis and uh, I think that, uh, you know, I've been retired now for eight years and <clears throat> children are out of our house, but we've got grandchildren that are, that are young and, and close by. So that's, that's really uh, keeps the season juices going for us. But I think that I am uh, very appreciative of the fact that I can find quiet uh, pretty easily hmm. and uh, you know I think that that um, reflecting on what uh, Mike said about all the commercialism distractions and so forth it's it's I feel that a, a really good blessing to be able to um, to find quiet and peace and, and uh, just kind of <laughs> try to lower my overall <clears throat> find find more calm and open myself up. Uh, I'm Sue Garrett. I'm relatively new to uh, the Shepherd, but um, been here for a couple of years. Uh, I have the same reaction of wanting to keep control. There's that word control, but to keep control of my schedule, not have to go to every single thing, um, just give myself time. Uh, and I, like you, I have young grandchildren who live nearby, and um, I spend a lot of time with them, helping with them, but uh, it's the outer world and everything, just trying to keep it a little more peaceful. 
I remember what the season was where we got. Yeah. I couldn't sleep last night. I go, I want to go in and turn on the TV because that's my best sleeping focus. Right <laughs> <laughs> um, there was some Hallmark movie on. There was this woman who was homeless with this little girl. And um, she's praying in the car. And she's saying, at the circumstances, she's homeless and she's got this child and the thing, and she's praying. She says, Let's remember this is the birth day of Jesus, mm -hmm. and that's what she's teaching her daughter. And uh, I was quite struck by that. Unfortunately, I didn't stay awake for the whole thing, but I, just, I, I got that, that little nugget, and, I, and uh, I think that's probably I just want something a little bit more peaceful than sometimes it gets. I do look forward to the, to the quiet and the calm in the midst of all that is going on around one. All the pressures to get this or that in the mail or do the, you know, there's things you have to do as but um, just because you're the woman of the house. <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, a lot more pressure. But uh, I am following the Advent program with you and, and also with Faith Club. Um, and I realized how much I needed it. We were, we were up, um, spent the night in uh, Estes Park at the Y. And we did the simple thing, build a fire in the fireplace. And uh, Harry retired early, and I was always taught I'm going to leave a fire. <laughs> so I, you know, I spent uh, two and a half hours just watching the fire. Mm -hmm. Nothing else. Uh, and occasionally poking it so it will burn faster. But, uh, and I realized then that it's been a very long time. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, that's what I look forward to is just spending time doing nothing and waiting for waiting for what God will reveal. Yeah, Andy Fulker, um I, I guess it's going to sound repetitive, but I uh, the last few years have been so busy this time of year and. And then, yeah, the whole pressure of like the season. Um, I, I would just couldn't wait for, for January to come around and to get this whole hectic season out of the way. And that's been the feeling the last couple of years. And so, hopefully, oh, maybe this year somehow will be different. <laughs> I don't know. some time to, for silence and peace and not wish away the, the Advent Christmas season. A long time ago when I was in North Carolina, um, the secretary in the religious services office, Southern Methodist, really Southern Christian. She, you know, one day I went down on Monday and she said, well, how was your weekend? And what'd you do? And I said, well, I did this. And then yesterday, I mowed the lawn. You mowed the lawn on the Sabbath? Oh. <laughs> and I said, what do you think clergy do on the Sabbath? We work. <laughs> she said, no, I didn't. So, so, you know, Advent, I love Advent, but anybody who's clergy knows that it's a really, really busy season. It's a hard, it's a hard time, and then you throw on top of just all of that stuff, you know, questions of stewardship and uh, you know, the finance at the year end and all that. I mean, it just it just sort of kind of, kind of goes bluey. And um, so, what I really appreciate is is something that's very focused like this, that that makes you that you carve out a little piece of time because I'm not going to get big chunks of time. I don't I don't imagine much time until um, after Christmas. At least a little piece of time to refocus. Um, Sort of intentionally, and, and that's kind of what, what I like about, about this. So. 
So what do you hope to get out of that? In the spirit of the season, I arrived late (laughs) (laughs) because I was doing many things already. Um, I think from what I've heard, I can echo what everybody else said. I saw something on Facebook that said Advent is this, like the moment in the theater between when the lights go down and the curtain comes up, Mm -hmm. that little moment of suspension. Oh, that sounds nice. (laughs) (laughs) And being in the choir, I am so looking forward to next week and that very quiet Mm -hmm. service that we are going to have together. And I look for moments like that. After a week of reading the Living Compass daily messages, I'm feeling a little guilty about searching for my own peace and peace of mind and not doing something more active for the world. But, and I'd like to integrate my church life and my out of church life a little bit more, but maybe in January. <laughs> so, anyway, hey, you snuck good. in. I did. <laughs> so, what's your, what's your Advent hope? Um, I would say my Advent hope is to be the light. To be the light. Okay. Too much darkness. I don't want to get swamped by the darkness. I've been there I'm trying to get out of it by being the light. Well, thank you all. So, let's join together in reading this. A pretty brief prayer from St. Teresa of Avila. May I be at peace. May my heart remain open. May I be aware of my true nature. May I be healed. May I be a source of healing to others. May I dwell in the breath of God. Amen. So if you uh, have not seen these guidelines, uh, this is uh, for listening. It's It's not necessarily for the right kind of you know, use I statements sort of thing. It's how do we listen? And so if, if don't, I'll let you read them um, for yourselves. There is I statements in there, of course, but not just that. So if you've not been in one of these um, sessions before, what what we do is we read, we'll read the, the, this is today's gospel. Some of you will recognize it because you were at the early service. Uh, We'll read it um, in two different versions um, to hear hear it differently. Um, And we'll sort of go around the circle and each do um, a paragraph or as far as you want to read. and uh, like I said, we'll read it in two different versions. Um, we'll let that sink in for, for a bit, and then we'll get into sort of the, the meditation part that's, that's on this. So um, whoever wants to start, and then we'll go counterclockwise from whoever starts. Nobody wants to do that. It has all the names. <laughs> What's that? I'll do it. In the 15th year of the ruler of the Emperor Tiberius, uh, when Pontius Pilate was governor over Judea and Herod was ruler over Galilee, his brother Philip was ruler over uh, Itria. Itria and Trachonitis, mm-hmm. and Mycenaeus was ruler over Abilene. During the high priesthood of uh, Annas and Caiaphas, God's word came to John, son of Zechariah, in the wilderness. John went through out the region of the Jordan River calling for people to be baptized to show that they were changing their hearts and lives and wanted God to forgive their sins. It is just as it was written in the scroll of the words of Isaiah the prophet, a voice crying out in the wilderness, prepare the way for the Lord, make his path straight. 
Every valley will be filled, every mountain and hill will be leveled, the crooked will be made straight, and rough places made smooth. All humanity will see God's salvation. So that's the contemporary English Bible, or the common English Bible, the one that we're using here. There's a different translation. Let's pick that up. In the 50th year of the rule of Caesar Tiberius, it was while Pontius Pilate was governor of Judea. Herod, ruler of Galilee, his brother Philip, ruler of Ituria, and Trachonitis, it sounds like diseases. Lysanias, ruler of Abilene, during the chief priesthood of Annas and Caiaphas. John, Zechariah's son, out in the desert at the time, received a message from God. He went through all the country around the Jordan River, preaching a baptism of life change, needing to forgiveness of sin, as described in the words of Isaiah the prophet. Thunder in the desert, prepare God's arrival, make the road smooth and straight. Every ditch will be filled in, every bump smoothed out, the detours straightened out, all the ruts paved over, Everyone will be there to see the parade of God's salvation. So ask, was there something in either one of those, and I can go back to the other slide, so if, if you want, if there was something in that one that struck you, or in this, is there a word or phrase that sort of stood out, that jumped out at you? If you want me to go back to that. life change, Pardon? baptism of life change. Okay, then go back, please. A voice crying out in the wilderness. My son uh, was going through a, a celebration of uh, uh, a year of sobriety in the city and put it on. And there was about 300 people in this place. And, and there was about 60 people that had, were honoring their sobriety. And uh, about 30, about the 30th person they got up was a John the Baptist, <laughs> an African-American young man that had a voice that just silenced the world and spoke of what it takes to be sober and what it was that would cause him to survive it. It was a, a, a little small African-American woman that wouldn't take crap from him in any way. As slick as the addicts are and as smooth as they can be, she would see through him every time. And he honored her in a, a crying voice of, if you want to behave or be good, Here's what you have to go through and to have someone that leads you. The, the room just was mesmerized. There's this kid that's probably 22, 23. And I've always remembered him. And that was over 25 years ago. Hmm. That, that experience happened. Well, any, any others? I know that it's exactly a word, more a vision of just construction, like construction. Destruction? Construction. Construction. Oh, re, you know, restru restructuring. It, yeah, just, I mean, I see, you know, bulldozers. Everything that's in the way gets moved in. So here's the reflection um, for today. And uh, since we just read basically the, the passage from Luke, um, I'll start with the first paragraph and we'll keep going around. <clears throat> this is from, I don't know where she is uh, bishop. So, um, when I think of being in a peaceful state, I do not automatically think of broods of vipers, unquenchable fire, or snacking on locusts while stepping into my camel's hair and leather girdle. I prefer to think, rather, 
about scented candles and warm sunlight, ocean waves lapping softly on the shore, and whisper traces of foam in the sand. When I think of practicing peace, I don't imagine a wild prophet standing waist deep in the muddy Jordan, telling me that what he's doing with water is only half the game, that the rest will be done through refining fire. I like to think, rather, about quiet, confidential com conversations with friends in coffee shops, about offering an apology to someone whom I've hurt or being the first one to break an estranged silence. Yet the prophet John teaches us that sometimes, sorry, yeah, that's okay. Okay. sometimes reconciliation and peace are achieved by a trial or a crucible. And the wisdom gleaned from the wild prophet reminds me of a crucible in my own life ordained when I was 45 years old. I was also 45 years old when I made my first confession with a priest. A Franciscan friend had suggested that making a private confession might be a good idea before I was ordained. The idea of it scared me half to death. Sit in a room with another human being and talk about my lifetime of offenses. Now it's not like I had criminal acts in my past, except for that lipstick shoplifting episode in fourth grade. <laughs> but I was intimidated nonetheless. I waited until my pre-ordination retreat. The kindly monk who was serving as my spiritual director told me to go to my room and write down every sin that I had ever committed. I thought that he was joking. He was not. It took me all night as I scanned my life, year by year, season by season, relationship by relationship. I tossed and turned all night, getting out of bed more than once to add to the list as my memory illuminated still another trespass. I skipped breakfast in the morning, too anxious to eat. The clock dragged uh, until my 10 a.m. appointment. Sitting in a comfortable chair in the corner of his room, the dear old monk invited my recitation of the list. He sat quietly with his thumbs rub, uh, rubbing the soft leather of his prayer book as he listened with the ear of his heart. Handing me a folded white handkerchief, he let me compose myself before offering God's absolution. And when he did, it was a sweet gift of grace that brought with it the feeling of cleanness, of holiness, of peace. It wasn't fun or easy. In fact, the whole exercise felt like refining fire. But it was, perhaps, the first time I had ever practiced making peace with myself. Well known to one practicing peace awaits your footfall. So take a moment now to um, those of you who went through the meditations this past week. Um, were there some, because this is about finding peace within yourself, were there some of those, something in, in all of those that really um, struck you? And, I, and, I'll, and I'll begin, there was one of the, one of the days, and I can't remember exactly which one it was, but one of the days <clears throat> they were talking about, it wasn't just um, peace not being the absence of conflict, but in one of them there was some reference to, to peace sometimes requiring conflict. Mm -hmm. To go through something, you have to go through something to be able to, to reach some kind of resolution. And, um, there's a, a program, it's not the Strengths Finder, but the, it's similar to that. It's called the VIA uh, Character Strengths uh, Inventory. And so it doesn't do the, the ones that the Strength Finder does, which are basically, you know, sort of 
vocational kinds of things. It, it has softer strengths or, you know, it has some of those, but it has some softer ones in it, you know, like gratitude. You know, that doesn't show up in the strengths finder. But my, and they say you're strong in all of these, but they rank it, right? And so the, the, the strength um, that is at the bottom of my list is bravery. And so entering into conflict to achieve resolution is a challenge because it's, it's not just responding to something there, it's a, it's a conscious entering into. Um, and, and so I, I spend a lot of time thinking about it this week. Um, and I hadn't thought about that before. Mm -hmm. you know. I think that was the one that made me feel guilty because I was looking just for that absence of conflict <laughs> or absence of chaos around me. It's not enough. <laughs> I don't wanna. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Peace is peace of that is absence of conflict. It's pretty pretty common idea. There are others, other reactions to anything that you might have looked at over the course of the week. Or in, in, in others. One of the ones was I think practicing peace with gratitude, and um, if I think for me that's a that's a very good place to always be at, and, and be more aware of how I have so much to be grateful for, and you know, and then I think for me that. That gratitude kind of then flows into a, a desire to be giving back to others. So. Can I get you some water? Uh, no, I've got some right there. Thank you. I'm not sick. This is just my. <laughs> So, uh, can, can you say a little bit more about how the gratitude <coughs> leads into the other stuff? Maybe, maybe you said it clearly, but I was. Sort of well, <laughs> you know, it, 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 it's <clears throat> I think to show active. Um, appreciation and thankfulness um, <clears throat> for the many, many blessings and, you know, uh, it, 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 for me, it just says, okay, I, I've, I've been, for whatever reason or non-reason, I, what I've been given is like, I, I, I feel this sense of sharing. Uh -huh. yeah, I, I shouldn't be, you know, to properly reflect my gratitude, I should be passing it on. Thank you. Um, what? Uh, then what we do is we look at the meditation for tomorrow that sets the theme for the coming week. And so that starts here. And I, I will go ahead and do this. It's, it's a short thing. And then we'll get into some, um, some more questions, some guiding questions. Our focus for this coming week will be making peace with ourselves. Lest we think this is self-indulgent, as Thomas Merton has written, we are not at peace with others because we are not at peace with ourselves. We cannot offer others what we do not have ourselves. On the surface, it may seem obvious uh, that we all want to be at peace with ourselves, yet in yesterday's reflection, the one that we just heard from Bishop Scanlon, um, 
In yesterday's reflection, the bishop reminds us that seeking a deeper peace within ourselves requires honest, soul-searching self-reflection. It's a road less traveled. So much so that Audrey, a person who takes practicing peace seriously, concludes her reflection with the unexpected words. It was, perhaps, the first time that I had ever practiced making peace with myself. We will structure our emphasis this week on making peace with ourselves by focusing on the Living Compass model of well-being and its four points, heart, soul, strength, and mind. Each quadrant will be the focus for one day's reflection. We will invite you to model Audrey Scanlon's practice of honest self-reflection by pausing each day to reflect on what it means to be more at peace in different dimensions of your life. So just um, a word about that. If, if you don't have, or you weren't, weren't able to, to get the download this, she's talking about stuff that's at the beginning that talks about this whole um, thing about what the living compass is all about. And it, 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 uh, it explains kind of the, the theory, the theoretical underpinnings of how they're, they're structured. So if you haven't seen that before, given what that was looking like, it's worth looking at. So, so that's what that's what this week is going to be about. And some of these and some of these questions that you'll see here that we can talk about today will show up, as you know. The questions we looked at last week showed up uh, on last Sunday showed up during the week. And so um, take a look at those. If, if uh, there's one that you would like to get a head start on with the wisdom of the other folks in the room. Um, call it out. I'm just thinking about all you know all the things I've done wrong. <laughs> <laughs> what was that? So I was just thinking about all the things I've done wrong that I've been probably most disturbed by being estranged from my sister-in-law. And, you know, I've never asked her why. Um, why you're estranged? Well, it's is, that, is that what you said? Is yeah, that what you I've never asked her. I think we are. Um, she finds little to, that she can say to me or with me. It's just hard for and obviously, it thinks something I could do, but uh, never asked her why. Interesting thought. <laughs> Not sure, I want to ruin Advent with it. I had a. It's to this point, and it, it, to you, it's just my, my experience. This happened to me two or three times um, that I, you know, in a relationship, a friend, a student teacher relationship. Um, and I, at one point, I felt estranged from somebody, and uh, actually from, from these three different people. And I finally decided, you know, I. I I needed to get that cleared up. And so I always took them out to lunch. You know, all three of them, I took them to lunch. And, and uh, I never ended up paying. So I, it was my so invite to take them to There's a reason to do this. <laughs> I wanted a free lunch. Um, and, you know, but, but after, and, and, and in every instance, it wasn't anything that they recognized. It was my thing. That I had the estrangement, potential estrangement was all on on my side of, you know, it was kind of one of those, what? <laughs> you know? And 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 it was that healing thing, you know. I'm not saying that that's what you should do or whether it's an advent thing, but I just know at least in, in, in given that um, I found 
adapt really healing. And I'm, I'm glad I made my first confession a lot younger than 45. <laughs> 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 I wouldn't have had as much to dredge up. <laughs> but yeah, I, I, there, there is that, that, that thing of, of, of cleansing one, um, oneself. I, years and years ago, when the kids were little pups, um, my next door neighbor was a lapsed Catholic who decided she needed to go back to church for Easter, and of course she needed to go to confession. Mm -hmm. She was terrified. I said, oh, I'll go with you, that'll be a novel experience. <laughs> <laughs> so I spent the week trying to dredge up something that was like bad enough to confess. You know, I've got three little kids, what the heck did I have time to do wrong? <laughs> I was very disappointed because because we didn't get to go into the confessional booth because mm -hmm. it was Easter and everybody was doing their thing. So it was kind of a drive through confession, which oh. seemed, not, <laughs> wow. I mean, we were walking, but you know, kind of a drive through thing, which seemed a little weird. And I failed because his response was, well, everybody does that. It's like, shoot, I failed <laughs> confession. <laughs> but so, so that was a less than a positive experience, I would say. But, um, I'm in a 12-step program and working my fourth and fifth step, which is basically confession in a different way. Um, I can attest to the, the, the free, freeing aspect of hanging out everything, you know, to God, to another human being, to yourself, and recognizing, oh, okay, under all this crap I've been carrying around for all these years, I'm a child of God. What? I'm a child of God. Mm -hmm. You know? And, and all that stuff isn't me. So, it was, it was, um, <laughs> it was interesting because I, I had to, my, my sponsor was far away, so we were doing it by phone. And it was November, and all oh, my kids were home, so I couldn't do it at home. So I sat in my car, wrapped in blankets in November, it was freezing. Um, you know, and, and for a couple of hours and we got through it, but, but it was really a life-giving experience. So, similar, not quite the same answer. I once asked a Roman Catholic priest who listened to confessions, um, and one of his duties was on Saturday to go to the convent and listen to the confessions of the sisters. I said, what's that? He says, it's like being bombarded with marshmallows. <laughs> <laughs> the, the flip side, I don't, I don't know, Mary, how many you've heard. I've not heard a lot. Um, I want to make it stop, but it's not that bad. <laughs> yeah, I know, I know. But I remember one, one, one person came to me and, and sort of laid out all the marshmallows. And, and I, I asked this person, do you think God cares about that as much as you do? Mm -hmm. And every so often I have to remind myself of that. Mm -hmm. you know, and that's the child of God thing that's, that you're talking about. Yeah. Yeah. Interesting. Other, any other questions or thoughts that are up on, on that? I think for the middle one, I, I recently picked up my journal again um, and started using journaling with big fat crayons. Um, with a fat crayon? Big fat crayons in my non-dominant hand, yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it gets another part of your brain talking um, to, to work on this stress and crap that I've gone through since, since everything's blown up in this world. <laughs> so you're you're so, you're writing? No, just making marks on paper. Sometimes it, oh. actually, sometimes it looks well. Sometimes I write. Um, sometimes it looks like something. Often it doesn't. The good thing is I can't draw with my right hand. Like mm -hmm. I'm a lousy artist. 
So if I do it with my left hand, I can explain the fact that it looks like it probably would with my right hand because I did it with my non dog <laughs> But also, it, first of all, there's something about that smell of Crayola. Mm -hmm. it, it goes deep into wow. you, you know? <laughs> yeah, even the words, right? Yeah. And, um, and sometimes after I've made some marks on the paper, the words come. Mm -hmm. But often the, 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 the stress and, and the emotions are so deep that they're beyond words. And so this helps to get out of my head, which is a dangerous place to keep anything, um, you know, anything negative, and, uh, and, and right size it onto a piece of paper. It can't, you know, if it's in my head, it, it, it grows like topsy. If I can get it on a piece of paper in some form or other, there's a border to the paper, so it sort of right sizes things. So that helps. There's an app that some of you may have, or you may have heard of, it's called Calm. And it's got meditations in it, you can sit and do meditations, and it's got movement things, but it also has things to go to sleep with, sleep stories. And uh, three o'clock in the morning, and how to go back to sleep. And one of the series that, that I'm listening to is, um, is a woman who's hiking, and, and She's taking along a small uh, paint set of paints, watercolors. And so she sits down at, at you know her lunch stop and, and does a, a sketch and, and paints. God, that would be great. I wish I could do that. Mm -hmm. And and she comments that that's different than taking a photo because if you're standing in a place with everybody else in the same place, you're taking a photo of the same thing. Everybody's got the same photo, but there's only one of those those pieces of art that she does. Like, yeah, I wish I could do that. You know? but, but there's that, that sense of, I don't know if it's that left dominant thing, but engaging, physically engaging in something, rather than forgetting to wait long enough for the camera to get in focus. Right. <laughs> Even to get in focus. If I look at a lot of the pictures I took over the summer, I thought, I could have waited just another second and it would have been a better photo. <laughs> in defense of those photos, Everyone may have taken a picture of the same thing, but probably to each person, they will see something different, different in yeah. their photo. Yeah, so. that's true. That's true. Yeah. Yeah. But in, in, Insight Timer is another app that does that. It's Say free. Again? Insight Timer, and it's free. It's got lots of bedtime stuff, meditation stuff. That's an app. Yeah, Insight Timer. I N S I G H T. Any other thoughts about any of those? You'll see them this week, so we can go through the through the days. I really like these. I, I, I find them very thought provoking, and I spend ten or fifteen minutes journaling after each one. So, any, any other thoughts on those? Yeah, I str I try. Families does this very easily, but I don't. Is meditation in the morning when I get up? I tend to be, be a very anxious person, and so I'm looking for that panacea, or that, you know, to kind of get rid of that. And of course, I can't, but uh, it may be part of my makeup. But I'm thinking maybe I'm looking at it from a different way. If I sit and try to meditate, it lasts maybe 10 seconds and then I've got stuff going on in my head. Monkey mind. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. And I'm, I'm thinking, just listening to this and reading this, that maybe I'm approaching it differently, the wrong way. I need to approach it about writing my confessions or something. I'm learning a little bit. I need some kind of peace during that time. You know, it offers options. Sorry, someone, and I, I'm terrible about remembering authors, but, but it was some holy woman who, who should have been able to like meditate like that. You know, a Mother Teresa type, although I don't think it was Mother Teresa. Uh, but someone we, we would think would be like that. One said about meditation, I sit down to meditate and a thousand times something interrupts me. 
And she says, but here's, essentially, she said, here's the good news. That's a thousand opportunities to turn my thoughts back to God. So instead of freaking out because the shopping list came on, okay. maybe that's a, hey, I'm here, come talk to me, says go. Yeah. Yeah. So maybe it's not failure, maybe that's just the process. Just, I need to refocus. Or... I'll just say, hi God, thanks. Okay. <laughs> I'm here. Thank you for that. Well, here are, um, these are the same practices that are suggested every week, things that you might might want to do um, gratitude. Uh, some people do that every day. It's just part of their, their normal um, daily quiet um, journaling. I'm a journaler. Um, daily prayer. For some folks, that's not a practice. And so is that something to adopt, whether it's using forms in the Book of Common Prayer or something else? Um, and then, you know, the suggestion is always here if, if folks want to raise their hand and say it'd be interesting to talk with somebody over the course of the week, have a prayer partner. Um, that would be certainly one of those things that you might do. Uh, any questions, any thoughts before we close? Today? Does everybody have access to, to the meditations? Pardon? I don't think I do. Uh, looks like we got, looks like Elaine made a bunch. I made some copies for Facebook because we're doing it this year. Oh, wow. Oh. Oh, thank you. Yeah, you can give them in a variety of different ways. Um, and some people access them, you know, they want them happening. And some people are inveterate Kindle users, and so they would rather have a PDF or something like that that they can read on their Kindle. I want to have paper because <laughs> I go. <laughs> you laying those with more copies? Yeah, if you want one, I, I can I can rip off some more of the paper out. Yeah, I mean, I, I've been reading it online. I'm like you. I'd rather have it. Yeah, see yeah. the grip. And what I get day by day is just the, Thank you. the daily <laughs> reflection uh -huh. and everything. But you said there was more. Yeah, that it, just it, explained the yeah the we, encompass part. If, if you if you. Uh, <laughs> Just download the PDF. It gives you the daily, it clearly gives you the daily stuff, but it has some other it's some that, other stuff in it. It's that more it. that's... So, so it, 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 it's worth looking at because it just gives you a little bit more. Yeah, because that's what's missing with the you know the little daily doses. All right. Well, thank Thanks, you. Elaine. Thank you, Elaine. You want to make some more you feel free <laughs> since that was not expected. Um, so here's our, our closing prayer. Let's, let's go ahead and, and read this together. Oh, Heavenly Father, you give your children sleep for the refreshing of soul and body. Grant me this gift, I pray. Keep me in that perfect peace which you have promised to those whose minds are fixed on you. And give me such a sense of your presence that in the hours of silence I may enjoy the blessed assurance of your love through Jesus Christ our Savior. Amen. Well, thank you all. Thank you. Thank you. And, uh, good luck being peaceful this week. Yeah. <laughs> uh, <Gotcha. laughs> you know, it's so busy. Oops. Did you want that? I did, and I got it. Oh, yeah. But if you would bring out the first one, the Saint Teresa. Uh, yeah, I can do that. Just mm -hmm. the very first. Oh, the first prayer. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Yep. Oh, to me. Whoa. My foot fell asleep or something. <laughs> <laughs> it's still on South Africa time? I wonder what South Africa time is. Would it just be Lent Living Compass? Or? Yeah, see, I think it's seven it, hours. It, it, in, in there someplace. Yeah. Um, there's no I can't. 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 I
Uh, yeah, if you go to livingcompass.org. Okay. Scanning. Yeah, and you'll see. Yeah, you'll see. There, there are a bunch of things on there. Okay. It should be. It should be. It should be the 2024 advert. Okay. I think you'll find it. Okay. Fourth thing with that Google and YouTube, you can use it for a month. Yeah, I could remember exactly what it was. Thank you. Yep.